Cindy Crawford went from being an obscure small-town girl to an international supermodel icon. But how did Crawford manage to maintain her relevance and influence in the fashion industry for decades, even as beauty standards and media landscapes changed so much? To know this, we have to go back to the beginning. Crawford's journey to becoming one of America's highest paid models started in a little town in DeKalb, Illinois. Her parents were not in show business, so growing up, Cindy had no desire to earn a living posing behind cameras. She first wanted to be a scientist, then a doctor, and finally a teacher. But Cindy was blessed with a bombshell physique, and that was all she needed to be transformed from the girl next door into a catwalk goddess. And the miracle happened in her junior year in high school. She was only 13 when fashion photographer Roger Level persuaded her to pose for a shoot for a weekly DeKalb Night publication. She did it, and that would become her first magazine cover. People loved it so much, but even that made things harder for Cindy Crawford. She loved school and didn't want to quit or get distracted. But it was already too late for her, as after a few days, she was compelled to make her new career official. In 1983, she joined a small modeling agency which was sold to Elite Model Management, and towards the end of the year, she was featured in the Elite's Look of the Year contest. Cindy was 17 at the time and was among the national finalists. She finally graduated in 1984 with high honors as her school valedictorian. They immediately offered her a scholarship to study chemical engineering at Northwestern University, but unfortunately she wouldn't make it to graduation day. Crawford dropped out after one quarter with the burning desire to become the world's greatest model. So she packed her bags and moved to New York City. It was there that she signed the official contract with the elite New York modeling agency. In 1987, Cindy appeared in the opening credits of the Michael J. Fox film The Secret of My Success, and three years later she made the cover of the January 1990 edition of British Vogue. Celebrity singer George Michael also featured her in the video of his hit song Freedom 90. After this, Cindy believed that it was time to get her hands dirty if she really wanted to be the best in the business. So when Playboy called, she quickly answered. In July 1998, Crawford posed nude for Playboy magazine, and that proved to be exactly what the fans were waiting for. They wanted more, and so she returned after a few months for a second nude pictorial. Playboy would after this rank her number 5 on their list of the 100 sexiest stars of the 20th century. By the end of the year, everyone knew Cindy Crawford and how irresistible she was. She maintained contracts with some of the best fashion and lifestyle magazines in the world, and it was estimated that she had made over a total of 500 appearances at that time. Crawford also walked runway shows for Chanel, Versace, Dolce & Gabbana, Christian Dior, Calvin Klein, and many more brands like this. A 1997 Shape magazine survey of 4,000 picked her as the second most beautiful woman in the world just after Demi Moore. People magazine also had her on their list of the 50 most beautiful women in the world. Cindy was becoming such an influence in the fashion industry that whatever she was seen wearing would always cause trouble for designers. In 1991, for the 63rd Academy Awards, Crawford wore a red Versace dress and it was really easy for her to steal all of the room's attention. But afterward, so many fake copies of the dress flooded the market until the red dress became a bad product. Unfortunately, Crawford was made to believe that she could reproduce the same level of success she had in the fashion world in the film industry, and this became the beginning of her unbecoming. In 1995, the supermodel broke into movies with a lead role in the film Fair Game. The film was a financial and critical failure, and Cindy's performance was criticized by many. She refused to give up, and so she tried again in 2001 in the American improvisational film The Simeon Line. This also failed to deliver on budget, but Crawford was somehow saved from the heat of critics. She learned her lessons, and ever since, Cindy has continued to withdraw from offers to appear on television. Just a few months after this, Crawford announced her retirement from modeling. Fans sensed that there was trouble, but the supermodel refused to reveal the real reason why she couldn't stay anymore. Five years after this, Cindy was a completely different person. She has created her own line of beauty products and in 2005, she launched a new line of furniture under the Cindy Crawford home name. Life behind all the fame and glam seemed to be tearing Cindy Crawford apart. While she was struggling to process a nasty heartbreak from her first divorce, fans kept demanding even more naked pictures from her. 
and this obsession from fans and co-stars alike will spill over to her relationships, almost messing up that part of her life. Crawford understood the difficulty in finding true love as one of the world's most desired women, but even at that, nothing could have prepared her for her first divorce. In 1991, Cindy tied the knot with Richard Gere, and we believed that they enjoyed a happy marriage until 1995, then everything came crumbling down. There were a lot of speculations, but the most popular would be that the trouble started in Cindy Crawford's home because of who she was and the man she married. Crawford was at the height of her fame in the industry, and this constantly took her away from her home for long periods of time. Gear also had a busy career, and so after trying to make it work for four years, they both threw in white flags. By 1995, their divorce was official, and people couldn't believe that it was happening so soon. They cited irreconcilable differences as the reason for separation, but Cindy wanted to be more specific. In one of her interviews, she revealed the real reason why her marriage with Richard Gere crumbled. According to her, she was forced to change herself to fit into his world and please him. And very much unlike the partnership enjoyed in marriage, Cindy confessed that she felt like a follower. I think part of the problem in our relationship was that we were a lot of other things, but I don't know if we were ever friends, like peers, because I was young and he was Richard Gere. After experiencing Richard, Cindy determined to be even more careful with the men she brought close to her heart, and this happened to be one of the best decisions of her life. A few months after her divorce, Crawford started a romance with American businessman Rand Gerber, and in 1998 he walked her down the aisle. It has been over 24 years and the flame of their love still burns bright. Many people were itching to know how Cindy was able to keep her home even with such a busy career. In response to their questions on the secrets of their long-lasting marriage, Crawford said, All throughout our marriage, we have made time to just be together, whether it's a walk on the beach or a weekend away. And I think we laugh with each other and we really respect each other's opinion, even when we don't agree. In the same interview, Cindy revealed that they both were in a relationship when they met for the first time. She was with Richard while Rand was with his girlfriend. So they started as just friends, and for her, this was what laid a solid foundation for all they enjoy today. The couple share two children, a son, Presley Gerber, and a daughter, Kaya Gerber, who, like her mother, is causing waves in the fashion industry. Crawford also confessed that the hardest part of raising children as a celebrity was protecting them from the public eye. According to her, it was easy to do what she wanted to do until her daughter became a successful model herself. To make matters worse, she then started a passionate romance with another high-profile celebrity. Crawford admitted that it was hard to keep her on track, but she is grateful that she and her husband were good models for their children. In the end, she confessed that it was all still a learning process for her, and all that she's focused on doing is strengthening the mother-daughter bond. Crawford and Rand recently celebrated their 26th marriage anniversary, and many fans sent in jolly wishes to the couple who were having the times of their lives. With her personal life all sorted out, Cindy's problems were now going to come from her work and the people she worked with. And the first to step on her toes was Oprah Winfrey. It took many years before Cindy Crawford was finally able to admit the true state of things with her and Oprah Winfrey after their interview in 1986. She was only 20 at the time, and according to her, Winfrey set her up to show off her body on national television and that made her very uncomfortable. Reflecting on how she felt at that moment, Cindy said, I was like the chattel or a child, be seen and not heard. When you look at it through today's eyes, Oprah's like, stand up and show me your body. Show us why you're worthy of being here. In the moment, I didn't recognize it, and watching it back, I was like, oh my gosh, that was so not okay, really especially from Oprah. We're not so sure if Oprah ever made a public comment on this, but all we do know is that Crawford never forgave her for that. Cindy has never been ashamed of her experiences with cosmetic doctors, and time and time again she reinforces how grateful she is that she can maintain her youthful beauty with it. The supermodel has admitted to multiple cosmetic surgery procedures, including collagen nutrition infusions and Botox. According to her, cosmetic modifications are all a big part of a conscious, healthy and balanced lifestyle. But it was not always like this for her. Crawford admitted that during her early years in the beauty industry, she kicked against it, but as she approached her 30s, she finally understood that her daily beauty routine, diet, and exercise regimen could only take her so far. So she turned to the doctors for help. But the question is, 
If she now feels this way about plastic surgery and maintaining beauty, then why didn't she use it to remove the mole on her face? Well, Cindy announced that she was not scared of going under the knives to improve her appearance. It became even more surprising to learn the real reason she kept the mole on her face. In her new memoir, Becoming, Crawford details how she was constantly taunted as a child by her peers because of the growth on her face. According to her, this made her so sad and she tried to convince her mother to have the mole removed, but she was not successful. Her mother reminded her of the scar that would come with the removal surgery and that was enough to force her into a rethink. But after Crawford landed her first magazine cover, this never became an issue again. She confessed that she now sees the mole very much as a blessing and not a curse. Her son inherited it from her and when he wanted to have it removed, Crawford did to him exactly what her mother did to her. I took him to a doctor who said exactly what my mom said to me. You'll have a scar. But it was good because he made the decision himself not to have it removed. Crawford told the Los Angeles Times. In a recent interview, Cindy Crawford opened up about how much better it is to be a model in old age than when she was in her prime. According to her, the new age models have a lot of exploration to do with social media and this makes all the difference. She also shared insights about casting directors in her industry and how they're making the process a lot easier. She said, When my daughter started modeling, the casting directors were so important. There were definitely places where I had to be like, Kaya, I know a lot about this business, but I don't know about casting directors. This was new to me. Cindy Crawford celebrated her 58th birthday in February, and the supermodel shared her genuine fears about old age and public pressure. In an interview with People magazine, Crawford revealed that many people have set impossible beauty standards for her, and that is enough to push anyone into drastic decisions that would lead to a lot of regrets. According to her, it took a very long time, but she's finally making peace with the fact that she's no longer in her 20s or 30s so there was no way she would look that good. However, she has chosen to do all that she can to look flawless, even at 58. No matter what I do, I'm not going to look 20 or 30, she said. I just want to look great for 50. I exercise, eat healthy, and take really good care of my skin. There's pressure on women to do the undoable, which is not age. But it's about looking great for however old you are, regardless of what that number is. Concluding the interview, the supermodel revealed that she would have retired if it was easy for her. According to her, whenever she announces her retirement, an opportunity with good enough seduction always comes her way. She, however, reinstated that she doesn't see herself posing behind cameras in the coming years, as it was time to make way for her daughter's generation. Cindy Crawford, now 58 years old, is still as gorgeous and captivating as we remember her to be. She enjoys the celebrity lifestyle with her family in her mansion in Malibu. Last we checked, her net worth was estimated somewhere around $225 million. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our other videos of beautiful actresses from the yesteryears.